Hello everyone, we've created another playlist to go over how to work with SQL Server using c -sharp. In this video, we will review how to connect SQL Server. Primarily, we will look into how to build a connection string and a connection object. Then, in the next video, we will look on how to retrieve data from SQL Server as well as put data to SQL. We do expect you to have a little familiarity with SQL, but we will be happy to answer any questions if you're new or you don't understand the material we present. We also need to have SQL Server, but we're not going to install and set up SQL. Instead, we'll learn about Docker and use a SQL Server image from Microsoft, which is already set up, and then we just need to download the image and run it in Docker. So we will install Docker on Windows, but the installation should be easy to follow for Mac and Ubuntu. As always, if you get stuck, let us know and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have or create additional videos to review those. So what is Docker? In the past, setting up a physical PC and configure was very expensive and costly. Then came virtual machines, which eliminated the physical setup, but still you had to do a lot of configuration and setup of the OS, the network, and other items. Docker is less than a virtual machine. You need to have an operating system set up and configured, then Docker can be installed and use the resources of your operating system. Docker is another application, but only the one that you need to install and then you can just download images of the services you're working with, in our case SQL Server, and run them in Docker. To learn more about Docker, please go to Docker website. They have tutorials and very good documentation. So let's install Docker. The installation is pretty simple. We just download the executable for Windows and run it. So when the installation is complete, you, depending on your system, you may have to log out and restart your system. So now that the installation is complete, uh, let's take a look at the Docker or the Docker desktop. 
So if we click on images, you'll notice that we don't have any, obviously, because there's nothing there. And because it's the first time, we can go ahead and skip this uh, tutorial. And we are presented with a sample code that you can run in the command line if you had a Docker image. In this case, that would have been Docker uh, getting started. So what we'll do now is um, we'll go ahead and download the um, image for SQL Server from uh, Microsoft. We could have done this uh, search also in the Docker Hub as well. And so we presented with a command line. This is of course after you have the Docker installed so that you can actually download any version of the SQL Server image. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're not going to specify a version. We're just going to uh, copy the command line without the version so that this way we get the latest image by default. your command line and just type docker you'll notice that you have quite a few uh, options um, this will validate that the docker command is working and now we're going to go ahead and run the docker poll um, and then the image name docker is now going to the docker hub and it's going to pull this image for us so this should take a few seconds to download Okay, so the download is complete now. And let's run a command so we can see that the image is indeed uh, in our Docker. and the Docker image is there. So now we need the command to go ahead and actually run the image that we just downloaded. We are gonna also go and take a look in the UI and as you can see that it is indeed there.
uh, you can click run but in order to run the this image we need to specify some values so if you go back to the uh, docker hub and if we scroll down um, you'll notice that there is a usage on how to use this image so basically as you notice we can run the docker run and then pass it some parameters um, we are accepting the use end user um, uh, agreement and passing a password and telling the uh, port that it's going to use is the default one 1433 and the image that we're specifying and if you notice we did not give a version so we need to make sure that whatever command we copy does not have the uh, version uh, next to this So what we're going to do is actually take this command and modify it a little bit. So let's put it into an editor uh, and let's create a strong password. Now that we have our command, we can go ahead and execute this. and go ahead and accept the firewall rules and so our image is now running we can take a look at this and as you can see now that the image is in use means that we are now running and the port that is running is 1433 If this was a browser, uh, you could have opened it into browser or you can actually go to the, uh, the CLI. This actually attaches to the Docker instance where SQL is running. So next, what we'll need to do is validate that we can actually connect to SQL Server using the management tools or the Visual Studio. Um, and you can use Visual Studio as well to connect to SQL. So now we're going to give you a little tip uh, on this is on Windows only. Create a text file and rename the extension to UDL. And if you now open it, you'll see a data link properties dialog. And in here, if we just type in the properties for connecting to SQL, we should verify and validate that indeed our, we can connect to our server. So we're giving the server name, which is localhost, uh, the username and password, and the database we wanna connect. So the connection was valid. Next, we're just going to go ahead and create uh, attach to a instance of the SQL. So this would be localhost and the username and password. And let's go ahead and remember this so the next time we do not have to provide this information. And as you can see, now we're attached to our SQL server and we don't have any user databases, but these are system uh, databases. Let's go ahead and create just a uh, database to play around with. Later on, we'll also create another database that'll have some tables and some data inside of it.
that we don't have any tables, we can also create a just a empty table so we can play around. As you can see, we have no store procedures of any kind. So the next thing we need to do is open up our uh, Visual Studio and uh, we already have a project called ADO.NET Tutorial. Um, basically it's just the Hello World template, there's nothing in it. Um, we're going to go ahead and now attach to a, a NuGet package that is going to have all our objects for connecting to SQL Server. So we looks like we already have the system data SQL client already installed. Uh, let's just go ahead and search for the Microsoft.data.sql client, which is uh, as you see here, and you also see the system data client uh, that is already installed. We'll go ahead and uninstall this. So this way we can have a clean uh, environment. We just need to clean up the namespaces because we're no longer referencing the uh, assemblies. So now we have a very clean project with just the uh, framework. And next what we need to do is install the Microsoft.data SQL client. So this NuGet package is open source and you can come here and take a look at the source code or look at the uh, unit test and there's some documentation on Microsoft website that you can use. Um, there's also a blog that talks about the differences between the system data SQL client and the Microsoft.data SQL client. Moving forward, you should be using the Microsoft.data SQL client because it works for both the .NET framework as well as the uh, .NET uh, version 5. And if you're using the older .NET Core version, it will, it, it will also work with that. Let's just go ahead and test to see if we have the objects that we can use. Now in order to connect to SQL, we need to have a connection string. The uh, data link properties dialog if you provide the information, there is an option to where you can say allow saving um, password and the fact that we are able to see the databases, we know that our test is successful. So if we click OK, we now is gonna, we're going to save that connection string into the file. And if we edit this, um, you'll notice that this is a connection string, but for the provider, it is a SQL only DB version 1. But this is not the, if you take this connection string, it will not work unless you, you're using uh, the only DB uh, provider. So we are using the SQL client, which requires a little bit of a different connection string.
So let's go ahead and create a SQL connection. So we're not getting any information about the SQL connection. Let's see if we can actually explicitly define the Microsoft system or excuse me, Microsoft.data.sql client. Oh, unfortunately, we're using the SQL Lite, so we must have uh, got the wrong package, and we have. So let's remove that and bring in the correct package. It's an honest mistake to make because it's right below it. So now we have the correct version and assembly selected, or the NuGet package, I should say. Let's go ahead and download that. Okay, so now if we go back to our namespace and change that to SQL client, and make sure that we spell the SQL connection properly. And it's still not correct because we have a lowercase s. Let's go ahead and make that into an uppercase. Okay, so now uh, the Visual Studio should recognize our object. And if we go into the constructor of the class, uh, you'll notice we have a couple of uh, options there. Uh, we can have it with no connection string or a connection string, a connection string with some credentials. So the next step is that we need to go ahead and create a um, connection string. So if we did have the connection string, we can either pass it um, doing it this way instead of the parameter. There is a property that you can pass the connection string to. So now we need to actually construct the SQL connection string and there's an object. It's the SQL connection string builder. Of course the builder also takes a, a string and it will have all the values separated in its properties. So first thing we need to do is we need to figure out which properties do we need. Well, we need the server name, but let's also define the application name. And later on, we'll see that um, we can define which application is connecting to SQL. And next, we need to have a data source. This is basically the server that we don't want to connect to. So the data source would be localhost in our case, or the server name. Because we're pointing to our own local instance, we can just use localhost. And then we can also provide either the database name and as well as the username and password that we want to connect to. So let's go ahead and put in the user ID and password. So in this connection string, it requires an initial catalog. So in our string builder, we have a initial catalog property and we can actually specify our database there.
Now let's take the connection string builder and pass it by using the connection string. We can either say to string or we can say connection string. So let's actually put a debug uh, or breakpoint while we debug this. We can comment this out and take a look and see what the to string versus connection string would look like. So let's copy the connection string dot to string and also if you open up the debugger we can see what our connection string would look like. So let's go to immediate window and run this and as you can see we have our connection string but you can also uh, use the um, connection string instead of two string. And if we copy that and go to the immediate window, it should be exactly the same as the two string. So this is how you can construct your uh, connection string and pass it to the SQL connection object. Now the SQL connection object has additional properties and if we actually launch our watch window, we'll use the quick watch window. As you can see we have um, all the properties here available for us on the SQL connection string and if you look at the state it is closed meaning that if we were try to um, use commands to uh, call SQL, it would actually fail and throw an exception because we need to have a open connection before we can do anything. So you can either open the connection synchronously or asynchronously. And if you're going to use async programming, um, you would have to uh, modify the main method so that it would be an async task and then you would await the connection uh, when you're opening open async. So let's go ahead now open the connection and see what the connection state is going to look like. It should say open. And as you can see our state is open. So now we can actually issue commands um, to SQL and also you can see the server version. This is the SQL version uh, that is uh, we're getting back and you can take a look at that version by going to the properties on SQL Server and if you look at the version information it would be the same. So let's take a look and see if we have any events that we can attach to the connection object. And there is an info message. And generally when there's any kind of information being passed, um, it will be sent to, to this um, uh, event. We can attach to this event 
or I should say register to this event and then we can go ahead and listen to those. We can do this manually or we can actually have uh, used the tab button to fill this in. If you do this manually, you would have to know the, um, the SQL, uh, uh, the, the, the event that's calling this method. You would have to know the signature, which would be the um, parameters being passed. So there would be an object for sender and then there would be an event arguments that are being passed. So these are multiple ways you could do this, but what we're going to do is go ahead and um, delete this and do it through the Visual Studio help. Or have Visual Studio help us fill this information for us by just tabbing twice. As you can see, now we have all of our information uh, being passed, our parameters. So if we just do a console.write on the event that's being passed, we can then see all of the events that will be triggered once we uh, are working with the uh, connection object. So one way to actually see any messages, so if you're opening a connection, uh, nothing is going to happen. You're not going to see any events because there's nothing really there. But if you're going to, for example, change a database connection after you've already opened the connection because you've passed information, then an information message will be passed to say we changed the connection uh, to the database and which database you're on. So first, let's take a look at this connection object. As you can see, we have no information being passed because we're really not doing anything. So now let's go ahead and actually put a method that's going to change the database after it's opened. So you do have a database object, but you cannot set it because it's a read-only, it's only a git and it does not allow you to set. So there's a method that is use database. We just need to use that one. Well, I'm sorry, it was change database, not use database. And then we will pass the uh, database uh, name. And if we run it now, we should see an event written that we changed database. So next, we're going to go ahead and learn about another property, which is the SQL connection get schema. And the get schema will give us information about the SQL server. Uh, for example, how many tables you have, um, and also what are the uh, types that are available in SQL. Um, if we actually look at this, you'll notice that we're passing a data table, which is not a class. Uh, data table is a tabular view of rows and columns. So if you just call it without any uh, information uh, and we use the, uh, the visualizer to when we're debugging, as you can see now, we can see this uh, rows and columns. These are all the collection names. So if you don't pass any values, you will get all of these uh, collection names that we can actually use um, within uh, our object. So we can actually call this and then loop through using the collection of uh, the collection names 
and then that way we can get all of the information uh, for that so if we just do a quick test and do tables now because we don't have any tables it should be there should be anything coming back so there is no rows for any tables which is expected uh, so what we need to do is actually go create some tables and um, we can just create a temp table let's go ahead and save this keep everything as default on the table name So if we execute, uh, refresh this actually, we can see our table. And if we re-execute this code, we should now see one table. So let's just do the default and getting all of the schema and then loop through the data table rows. The object getting passed back is going to be a data row. We need to make sure this table is unique and it's not the same. And now for the schema, we need to pass a column for that row that we're getting back. It should be the zero instance or the name you can pass. But as it stands, the the variable is actually coming back as an object not as a data row so we can explicitly define a data row here and we have no namespace for it so if we so let's actually um, re-execute this and see what the object type is going to be and you'll see that it will be data row okay so now if we bring your cursor on it it is a data row so we'll go ahead and change that to data row and it won't work because the namespace is not there We'll go ahead and add the system.data and now it should work. So now we can actually change this line so to say item and now you can see that it's we're getting column. Either you can pass the column, the column name, the index value of the column. And if we go to the uh, item array, it's the first instance that has the uh, data for us. So we can just pass a zero and do a two string on it so let's go ahead and re-execute this because we made some changes that visual studio can account for and now if we go look at the data table we can see that it is the schema information And if we execute it again, we have the SQL Server version information, all the properties for that.
So these are data types that are within SQL that we can use. Let's go ahead and actually create a new database. We're going to paste this code that we got from Microsoft's website. We'll make sure that it's also available on our uh, GitHub. So if we execute this, it will create a new database called My School, and it will create two tables inside of that. And it will add some information into the table. So there's My School. And if we go in here, we have two tables. Now we can right click on this and you can say select top uh, 100 or 1000 and you can see all the information within this table but you can also say edit um, top 200. So the difference between the two is this will now allow you to make changes to the data whereas the other one was just a cursory data that came back and um, it displayed in the UI, you could not change it. So if you run it again through this uh, other version, you can see the information there being updated. You can also um, use some help here by showing some additional background pane. So here, you can actually now see the table and you can also see the SQL it generates for us. So there's another quick way to uh, not write SQL, you can just copy and paste. By checking or unchecking, it will add columns or remove columns. So now we had a department, we just removed it. So if we execute it using that little uh, icon, you can see that the uh, department is now gone. We'll include it back. We can also drag it at a table. Now this table already has a uh, join information and it's being displayed. And as you can see that we already have the inner join also created for us in the T-SQL. If we run it, the same data comes back. Now we're not seeing any information about the second table and the reason for that we did not ask for any columns. So if you choose all the columns and if you run it again, we'll get all the information in here. Now we do have an additional column here called uh, expr1, which is expression 1. And that is because there are two columns here, both uh, called department ID. So we can also validate this um, uh, T-SQL that was generated for us and we can see that it's correct. We can just copy this and create a store procedure or a view out of it. We can also copy this and put in a new query to make sure it is valid. Go ahead and format this really quick. And same information is coming back, so we know that this is correct. So, because we're already getting the department ID, we can go ahead and uncheck one of the department IDs so that um, this we don't get duplicate data. We uncheck that one. Now the expression one column is gone. So if you didn't want to use SQL Server tools, you can still use the Virtual Studio and connect to SQL Server. It has a SQL Server Object Explorer 
and when you open it, depending on your system, you might see some information that you, you see here. These are file-based SQL, and they are not services. Um, and when you connect to a SQL server, you can either look at local uh, or network, or you can go through Azure. But here we're just going to define our information that we pass in the connection string by using localhost, uh, using the SA, using SQL authentication, uh, SA for username and our password. And let's go ahead and remember that so the next time we don't provide this information, now that we have all of our databases we have a valid connection and if we expand that we can see our databases and we can see our tables and we can also view the data similar to what we did with SQL We can also view the database designer that shows us how many columns we have and the types here. You can actually see the T SQL that was used and generated as well. You can also script the uh, database table. And you can also run queries against the database. So you have a couple of options. You can either use the SQL Manager or Visual Studio to connect to your database and execute commands against it. There are differences between Visual Studio uh, uh, SQL Server Object Explorer versus the uh, SQL Server tools, and we'll see those in upcoming videos. So that's it for this tutorial and we look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial where we will show you how to execute commands and retrieve data from SQL Server. Thank you and stay safe.